Welcome, hungry people. Today we're making braised short ribs over a bed of fluffy, buttery uh, mashed potatoes. It's gonna be awesome. So we have here a beautiful three bone short rib that's been cut up two and a half inches. Uh, they refer to these as English cut. Um, you can get them in your local butcher shop or even um, certain big box, big box um, stores might actually cut these for you. Um, but again, it's hard to find that. Then basically we're gonna have our aromatics. We have bay leaf, thyme, rosemary, garlic. We have, we have some tomato paste. We're gonna deglaze the pan, reduce down with some wine here. So yeah guys, let's get started. So might as well just so we can utilize the knife here. Just cut the garlic in half here. There you go. Nothing too uh, crazy. If you hear some uh, bombs in the background, that's my baby uh, working out the diaper. <laughs> so let's go ahead and um, just do a light coating of oil. This is a mix of two high heat oils, avocado, canola, and then a little bit of uh, olive oil for flavor. Let's rub that meat in a little oil. There you go, and from afar, season your beef. Remember, there's four sides, these are big pieces of meat, so don't be afraid of seasoning. Let's get a little pepper. This is going to be a long cut, so don't be afraid of adding pepper. And if you don't have fresh garlic available, you can use garlic paste. I've done that before and it turns out delicious though. So yeah, I'm gonna roll up, mop up all that seasoning on the sides there. Again, this is a super simple recipe, but very, very delicious. Fall off the bone. Make sure to leave them meat side down for now. I'm gonna show you right now why. Alrighty guys, well let's get over to the to our pan over here and start the cooking. So this has actually been preheating for probably the past 10-15 minutes. So our goal is to sear the meat in the hot skillet. Let's say not very hot. The water doesn't even evaporate; it just jumps. Um, sear the meat. Um, once we got the color we want, put it to the side, and then essentially start to uh, create a little sauce. Put the meat back in to glaze the pan. It's gonna be awesome. All right, guys. So let's begin. We need our oil. And what you're looking for on the meat, more than anything, you're looking for color. So a bit more, a bit more than this. Probably here in the middle, we'll have a little bit more color. Right here. Oh yeah, so just a little bit more crust than this, and then we'll turn it around. Okay. 
same thing we're doing with oil, just piece of the wasting there. Flip the pan. Let that drain off a little bit. So all the excess fat and oil is going to the paper towel. You could save it for beef towel, you know, for a little vendor fat, but I don't need it. I already have a lot. I'm going to start putting these guys down for now. A heap tablespoon of tomato paper. It's probably two, to be honest with you. And we're gonna cook it out. And what I basically mean is you're you're incorporating the flavor. You're you're cooking out that harshness, that bitterness that uh, so the tomato paste will have. And while that's going, we're throwing the garlic. Don't worry too much about the, the leaves there, the outer skin of the garlic. You never want to pour wine directly onto the meat. And the reason is, whenever you're cooking it off, uh, the wine itself doesn't get a chance to cook off completely if it's on the meat, on directly on top of the meat. So then you'll have random pieces of the food that's going to be bitter. So that's why you pour it around. That way it reduces down to a beautiful syrup consistency and then you have it. And there goes the same, uh, same thing for um, whenever you use any kind of alcohol. You don't really want it to throw directly into the onto the protein. So when you feel that it's gotten to a point where it's kind of like a syrup consistency, not too thick of a syrup, but you just want more. Like a thick bubble. Right, the least amount of water um, liquid it has, the uh, less bubbles, the le bigger bubbles, the less bubbles. Let's see where we're at. Just one similar consistency all around. Oh yeah, see that there? It's kind of like if you get a spoon and you coat it, and you drag your finger across. In this case, you're dragging a short rib across, keeping it space. Okay, so it's reduced where I want it to be. Now we're gonna add the beef stuff. Looks like we lost one here. <laughs> it's okay. And here's when you start putting in your aromatics. You don't want to do too much rosemary just because uh, 
Rosemary is, rosemary is a delicious herb, but sometimes uh, uh, it can't overpower the other herbs. So. I want to make sure we have a little bit, but not too much here. Chef Tom said it the best. It's She's like your um, that loud aunt that you love, but sometimes, you know, a little bit of her goes a long way. So just kind of uh, not too much. A little bit of bay leaves here. These are fresh. Dried is good as well. You can spread this around. Perfect. And while we wait, I'm going to clean up here. For good measure, just a little bit of weight from the silicone mat. So I'm going to turn that off. Hopefully, it doesn't melt. And just put it in the oven. And in case I didn't mention the temperature, we're looking at 350 degrees for approximately two and a half, three hours. I usually go for the two hour and 45 minute mark and then. Um, shut on, shut off the heat, and it just stays in there for 30, 40 minutes just to rest and and just to for um, things to cool off a little bit before we um, plate and serve. Alrighty, guys, we'll probably see you guys in the next uh, three, three and a half hours. Short ribs are done. Let's go and see how uh, they turned out. Super excited. So they were in the oven for. Two hours, 45 minutes, and they've been resting since, ever since, so. Okay, so the way you serve these is you serve them um, over the bed of mashed potatoes. What I'm going to do though, I'm just going to put this to the side, just drain the juice, and then serve it up. Babies are going bananas, so let's just utilize this. What we got? Here, guys, the buttery mashed potatoes. And again, this is all home style. You can go fancy if you like. This in the middle. We get a plop, a little height. That's fine, no problem. Then we got our short ribs here. Oh, yeah. It's kind of. Position them it's kind of a, on top, kind of not. Kind of like they're like climbing to the top of the mountain. Those two look good like that. What are you doing with the bone? Not this one. Oh, that one? She's saying that because you're on top? No, right there where you have it. Yeah. Right here? She picked that one out because this is going to be her plate. I already know it. She's going to wait. All right. And 
and then grab a beautiful, let's pour out a little bit just in case there's a little fat in there. All right. Beautiful liquid. Get it all over your, your floor here. And again, reduce down as a nice glaze it is ideal, but that's okay. All right, guys, check this out. Nice, tender, pull apart. Cheers. Mm. You can get that mashed potato. Mm-hmm. Well guys, thank you guys very much for watching. If you, what are you doing? <laughs> thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button, the like button, hit that notification bell, comment down below. Um, thank you very much guys for watching and remember, stay hungry.